ladies and gents, we are working on the 98 Ford Expedition again. Um, good. Oh, good here. So what we've got going on is coolant smell inside the cab, as well as a lot of moisture slash uh, contaminant forming on the inside of the window. So on this model, uh, as you can see there, from a straight back, um, those are the heater hoses going into the heater core, I believe. Um, yeah. And so, of course, as most of y'all know, you have to take apart the dash to, uh, to actually do the job. So let's really quick. Those two tubes are, uh, whoops, sorry guys. Obviously connecting to these, this is housed within the dash, and obviously it's has coolant running through it, and then the lower uh, fan obviously blows air through it and the air gets warm. Let's go see if we can see some uh, drainage coming in through the vent here. Um, it hasn't been a huge, um, a huge, what's his name? Like, uh, there we go, yeah. Okay, so the problem is uh, my light isn't gonna. I gotta get a different light. So give me one second here. All right, so this is inside the driver's side floor duct. And as you can see, I've got plenty of stain. Obviously it's not like leaking actual coolant. Obviously it is in ways but it's not like a drip but as you can tell man sheesh it is definitely uh, uh definitely apparent so there's evidence i was looking for and the only way for that to get in there is through the heater core so there's nothing else that uh could be causing this so here we go all right so it is confirmed. Um, our heater core is definitely leaking. So the first thing we're gonna do is unhook this battery. Um, my seats aren't, um, first of all, I don't have a center console on this and I don't have uh, electronic seats. So I can move things around as needed. Pretty much all I'm gonna need to do is drop the steering column and obviously peel back the whole dash assembly as much as I can keep it together, but I'll have to take a bunch of stuff apart. And then, so obviously, so we don't run the battery down, I've got both doors are able to open all the way. That's super important. Let me try to get this passenger window rolled down here. Ugh. I could just leave it for a minute in the garage, but it's back on so this place can warm up a little bit so that's all i'm gonna do guys i'm gonna try to find the best way to film what i'm doing inside but honestly i do need to get this done as well so um i'll do the best i can but i'll uh, also do like a step-by-step -step in the interim and whatnot thanks for tuning in All right, ladies and gents, uh, getting through this job. I did take off some things that weren't necessary, actually. 
Uh, the glove box, you don't need to take off. You just need to bend down to get to the, uh, the lower uh, airbag. And I think there's another, there might be another bolt in there somewhere. Um, all this stuff, you really don't need to take out. I did because, uh, number one, I got some bulbs to replace. Again, the gauge cluster, same thing. You're gonna need to take that out. You really, all you need to do is drop the steering column and then, uh, you know, get all the bolts loose to actually just peel this thing back, so. Anyway, uh, there's some great videos on it already. Um, shout out to a handful of guys that have already done videos on these, but getting there, I gotta remove the uh, upper trim here to, um, I'm not exactly sure why. Everyone did it on the video, so I guess I'll just do it. And then, um, yeah, we're pretty close to uh, being able to peel this back, and then we'll get the eight here for out. So, oh, it's going pretty good. I'm a little bit disappointed I took off some stuff I really didn't need to, but um, that's what I get for just charging ahead. I should have watched a video or two beforehand, but that's okay. That's how you learn. And again, also, I'm getting into some areas where I need to replace bulbs that are out, and just kind of overall get everything cleaned up. And uh, what else do I need to do this thing? Oh, I need to make sure I check the front U joint. Uh, it's got a pretty good vibration when it's in four wheel drive. When you're on the throttle. Anyways, guys, so I'm gonna continue on. I gotta uh, unplug some stuff down here. Um, so yeah, very exciting. Um, this is something that uh, honestly I haven't been looking forward to doing, but it's going pretty well, so. Dash uh, slid out. Pretty happy with that. Um, next thing we're gonna do is remove this cover um, to access our heater core and get in there. Uh, so I have to go run a few errands. I'm gonna come back and do that. But uh, I'm probably not gonna film. There's, like I said, there's another video or two out there. But it's gonna be these bolts here. I think I gotta remove this vent to, to slide it out. And then just it's a matter of getting the uh, getting everything unhooked so here we are all right ladies and gents we got that blend door out of there i had to very carefully uh pop it out so what happened was in this position i believe is um i'm not even sure because i just looked at my dial and the dial was like uh this is the blend door actuator the dial was like not completely hot but kind of in the middle, more towards neutral, meaning it should have been actually right here. So I'm not sure what's going on there. But anyway, the door was facing out. Sorry if I'm yelling into the mic here. And so I couldn't just pop that actual, the, the, the door uh, assembly out, but I was able to very carefully pop it out. It's very simple, something that really can easily break. But as, so as you can see, it is just a pain in the butt to get that actuator. Look at all this. I can't even get this carpet all the way back without removing it all the way across. So luckily it popped out. I'm gonna be very careful getting it, getting that back together without, you know, causing damage. But look at all the cool, I, I didn't have any idea it was getting this bad. But uh, yep, yippers, yippers. That's what happens when you're, and I think what happened is this coolant just never got really maintenanced. Um, we got this thing three years ago well, four years ago. I've never done the coolant. I'm pretty sure the last time the coolant was changed in this thing <laughs> was when my dad did the heater core in early 2000. So it made it uh, 15, 15 years, not bad, but if, I guarantee if I would've flushed the coolant, I don't think that uh, we would've had any issues. Because a lot of times when your heater core is going out, it's because the coolant has uh, grown corrosive. So, uh, 
and then it eats, eats through soft metals like uh, you know, aluminum and what have you. So anyway, but sometimes they just do wear out, so no big deal. I'm really thankful that Ford made this cover to just pop off. I've done some like on Jeeps where you have to remove the whole HVAC unit and it doubles the time, the amount of time just about to get the job done. And I'm draining the coolant. I guess I should show you. There's my walk of shame here. That's the coolant. Um, it's obviously supposed to be a nice uh, bright neon, almost green, and it looks more like uh, the secret of the use. Um, luckily, there's nothing in it, but yeah, this isn't good. Really important step, guys, in maintenance, especially these engines that are aluminum, is proper coolant maintenance because you don't want the coolant to become corrosive over time and just eat away at your whole the whole situation so I got my headlamp on I, I have a cool trick that somebody online shared I can't remember his name shout out to uh, the guy that um, I think it was Gilbert um, these lines obviously are always a pain in the butt to get on and off there's a little quick disconnect what he did is he cut the lines on the uh, heater core side Remove the heater core. Obviously, these were loose. Pulled them out. You know, once they get out in the open here, you can carefully uh, peel apart the connectors. That way, you don't got to worry about wrestling with them back there. So I'm going to do that. I have to get the hacksaw to do that. So I'm going to get that hacksaw out, and I will come back um, when we have this this uh, heater core out. All right. So. I tried to cut the uh, tubes, but I didn't have anything to do it correctly. And you have to do it right against. Let me, let me go. Okay. Okay, let me cut it from the other side. So I'll block it here. So, I mentioned earlier that I was going to try and cut these lines, but you really have to cut them right here so. They can be pulled straight through. You can't pull these angled parts through this foam piece. So what I ended up doing is just uh, unplugging the lines as normal. I have to replace the clips and the O-rings. They do sell little rebuild kits. I'll show you in a second. Um, let me see here. All right, so it's going to want to slide straight up. Hmm. All right, guys. You know what I'm going to do? Here, I'm going to have to come around. I might just get my right angle grinder out. Well, not sure what's going on actually. There we go. Alright, guys, just pulling it straight through the foam. There we go. Something that blocking the full shot. Still has coolant in it. But, oh. All right, so let me get this zoomed out. So as you can see, leaking pretty badly. Um, part of it's made of copper, so I'm pretty excited about that. I'm gonna end up melting this. So, anyways. Now to get things cleaned up, I'm gonna clean off the inside of this HVAC unit. Take a look here. Whew, look at all that, holy mackerel. Honestly, I had no idea it was this bad yet. You know, I didn't see anything in the cab, you know, like fluid coming into the carpet, but man, look at that. Lots of coolant, so I'm gonna get this all cleaned up and uh, get it done here. Yeah, so that goes through there. So that's gonna run. Okay, I see. So it was in the hot position. I'm gonna force the air through the heater core and then through here. Sorry, through here and then up through the uh, system. So when you do this job, make sure you put it. The, heat, the blend actuator on cold. Um, but the thing of it is, is 
Mine was actually closer to the middle, and it's right now cranked and hot, so I don't know. Definitely don't go full hot before you unplug the battery and you're doing this job. Um, you know, crank it to like the middle. Uh, maybe even all the way cold, but I don't know for sure. So I'm also gonna vacuum out the uh, evaporator core or whatever. Um, Oh yeah, condensers up front and set back for it, of So there it is. Time to start cleaning up. All right, ladies and gents. Uh, first, sprayed everything out. Just kind of blew compressed air around uh, this door right here. It was soaked with coolant. I was able to pull it up a little bit. That one's uh, operated through vacuum, so luckily I was able to move it. That was soaked with coolant, so I had to basically uh, spray a bunch of kind of an organic cleaner with a little bit of water, then I wiped it up, and then I sprayed it out with air compressor. So we got the new heater core in there, and it's ready to, um, I still have to clean the blend door and get that reinstalled. I'm probably gonna do that tomorrow, because I, I kind of kept on going. Excuse me, I wanted to get everything cleaned up. And, uh, man, it's looking pretty good. A couple of drain holes that I noticed. Um, obviously down here for the, uh, through this way for the evaporator or the, you know, the condenser, excuse me, the uh, evaporator core mo uh, moisture. And then even here, there seemed like there was a little channel, almost like they knew this, th this was gonna leak. So it's, that's where I've been seeing coolant. I think it's been, dripping out here and then through the there's another actually drain behind here so let me explain also why I've been seeing coolant I thought it was associated with something else but you know so all right we'll get her done